What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? I'm good. There's actually a third person on this show that <laughs> Disney and Marvel have airbrushed out of the picture. You can't see them, but they're actually still here. <laughs> um, before we get started, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. We really do appreciate it. It really does help support the channel. Um, let us, by the way, I just want to mention before we continue again, we won't talk about the rock that much anymore. Cause I feel like we dedicate a lot of time to the rock and it's almost turning into like, why you hate the rock? <laughs> and it's like, I don't hate the rock. I just hate his ideas, you know? And, uh, we won't talk about him being bond and another ridiculous, uh, uh, person, not, he's not a ridiculous person, but he threw his name into this ridiculous idea of him being, being playing bond himself, which is Tom Holland. It's like, it instantly reminded me of the James Bond animation, uh, TV show that they had a young bond, like, <laughs> but no, no. So there's a lot of ridiculous stuff. Rock is going to continue talking. That's how he keeps his name out there by saying craziness. So we're not going to continue talking about him unless we see the Black Adam, a new footage, a trailer or something. Yeah. That's when we'll get back into that. But let us start with a topic that we've made a few shows about. We talked about our concerns. We talked, to, we talked about uh, what can we, uh, we expect. Um, and Brian... If you want, you can call me a flip flopper. I'm not saying the movie's going to be awesome, but I'm going to say I am interested now. Um, you saw the trailer. When did you see? It? You saw it last night. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, I mean, I think it looks good. I mean, I think I, you know, I, I was. Ne I guess I was never in the <laughs> quite in the dumps that you were about this but <laughs> it, it looked what I I guess it kind of looked what I expected which was it was big um, we finally got a look at the, the villains and we get a sense of the scale yeah um, you know and there's still the big open questions but yeah I think I think it looks exciting. Production value looks high. Um, and then I would say, you know, some of the concerns we have still resonate, like still resonate because there's be so yeah. many characters in yeah, just yeah. this three minute yeah. trailer yeah. that you're like, mm, how is this going to be serviced in a way that feels logical, natural, and not just like a greatest hits album of, of the franchise? It could still pose a problem with all these characters. Yes, absolutely. I still have my, I think we still can agree that those are one of the biggest concerns that we have, that it's just too much in one film and too much to cover uh, for the result that you want to get with this, right? Suicide Squad, these are, this is big stuff, right? Finally, we're getting it. But one of the things that got me interested is some of the things that um, um, they talked about in the film. Well, they mentioned certain, I think, key uh, key dialogue that for me got me more interested. One of the one of which was, um, they all die in their universe because of Spider Man. That to me tells me the why, right? Why they hate Spider Man. I, I, you know, I never caught on to this because we didn't know what we were getting, right? What we knew is that they were leading towards getting the Suicide Squad on, not Suicide Squad, Sinister Six, um, on, 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 on film. But I, one of the things that had me concerned is that, you know, why they're going after Spider Man. So now we have the the reason why we're going after Spider Man is because. We die pretty much, like, except for Lizard. I don't think he dies, right? Dr. Connors, I believe his name is. I think he doesn't die at the end of this. I think he just goes to jail. 
But anyways, all of them fall to the hands of Spider-Man. So I get that. Um, I wasn't laughing at none of the jokes that they had there. I, I didn't think those were too funny. But I think Otto Octavius is a cool name, by the way. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be smirking at that. But. Yeah, they, I, they, they should have made they should have made something cool about it, and not make it a, a funny joke or anything like that. But um. Did you get a, a a sense that Doctor Strange's, I guess, tone and I guess um, his dialogue was a little bit more emphasized in this one than previous uh, uh, trailers or things that we've seen for that movie? Well, I continue to get the sense that Benedict Cumberbatch's role in this is quite substantial. Yeah. He certainly is moving the narrative along a lot, whether it's this botched spell, whether it's kind of him, he's clearly giving the exposition to Peter about what is happening. Yeah. So we're, he is our narrator and our guide. And so in that sense, you know, the comparison was made to Tony Stark uh, and Robert Downey Jr. in, in, in Spider-Man. This part feels much more integral to the main story than Iron Man was to, you know, um, kind of civil war and then and then uh, homecoming. Um, he also doesn't strike me as all good in this. Like he's kind of portrayed in the trailer as sort of like, as MJ points out, you kind of screwed up and you're trying to pass the buck onto us. Like, what's up with that? Like, let me point something out and then you can continue. I this uh, to me, what you're pointing out seems to be a, what a lot of people are thinking. Um, with regards to, I think the What If series or something like that. Is this our? Is this six one six? Yes. Stephen Strange. Yes. Yes. Like there's something weird at the Sanctum. He's acting kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the decision? Because we have heard some rumors that Marvel and or Disney and Sony had an issue um, with possibly revealing the two Spider-Men. It seems like <laughs> MCU won that argument if it was being had. Your thoughts? Yeah, they did. But then like the conspiracy theory just ratcheted up. Because I think, <laughs> did you see, what was it, the Brazilian trailer? No. Did you see that? So the Brazilian, so the, the fight with Sandman and the lizard where they're kind of like leaping at each other. That's where it'll pop up. And Electro's that's what, that's the shot. The, yeah, and then in the Brazilian trailer, it shot. A, they show a little <laughs> bit more of it. There's a shot of the lizard literally getting punched by something invisible. Like you could see his head, like get hit, and there's clearly something there yeah. that's been wiped off the screen. And yeah, they missed like, that. That's, that's them. They're there. <laughs> they've been hit. So I don't know. They. I guess Marvel won the argument, but maybe maybe lost the war because yeah, now yeah. everyone is You're, like, everybody well, I, can like see that's them. It, it, I just yeah. can't see them. Yeah. So. We certainly, come on. I, I mean, by now, we should, people should stop asking these guys, are you in the film? Are you in the film? It's like, stop it, right? We already, we, they already said in the, in the, in the, in the trailer that these portals are, are, or these, all these characters or these individuals are coming from other universes, right? Right. So, uh, Spider, the Spider Man in those universes can't be left out. Right. So it's like by now, everybody should know a good job again. Don't show Spider-Man. We'll see him in the trailer because there were some videos of reactions of people seeing like like gatherings. I think it was in a movie theater or something like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, the young people are out to see this. They do. You know, I, this is the point. Which so, I think is interesting just because depending on how young you are, you know, the Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Thomas Hayden shirt. That's a, that's another era. Like they don't, I mean, do they, I mean, I, I assume a lot of people have gone back and seen those movies, but like, that's not their spider. -Man. Like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is not their generation Spider-Man. It's the Tom Holland Spider-Man. So in a weird way, it's like, do they, do they appreciate and like kind of understand those performances as they're being kind of brought forward uh, into yeah. this one? I think, I think that's interesting that they're scoring so well with that idea. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I still think, well, 
I've sort of changed course a little bit. I think this movie, I, I knew this movie is going to do well. Everybody's dying to see this film. They didn't put out a whack trailer. Um, it's going to do well. Would it be a disappointment? Still, I don't, I, I, I'm changing my mind on that based on what I saw. I'm still a little concerned just because I feel like if you think about what you've seen in the trailers and what you haven't seen but you know is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah J. Jonah Jameson's been a zero in the promotional campaign, but you know that that's a huge catalyst to this whole process, right? So yeah. that whole interplay and storyline with, with J.K. Simmons is going to be explored, or should be. If it's not, then that's kind of weird given where we left. Of course, it's home. a staple. So that, yeah, so that's one piece of it. I think the other thing is they've tr they've definitely tried to hint at you know, Peter and MJ, but Peter and MJ has to be a big part. Of, like, this has to be of a course. big part of this and her dealing with him being outed. Like, that that has to be said. So that has to be given room to breathe. Yes, yes. Uh, and then you have the Doc Strange angle, what's going on there. And then you have the villains. And then you have, you know, Charlie Cox, the other Spider-Man, what role they have to play. Um, and, and then you have kind of the the linkages right like what is this linking to like what it, it, they're saying it's an end game but obviously we know it links to other things so yeah two and a half hours you know the pacing's going to be key like because that could really fill up um a, a lot of movie if they're not careful last part and then we'll move on um they've done a good job of building that relationship between mj and spider-man everybody loves zendaya She's like one of the hottest actresses. She's out there. She's been in, in in the biggest films, and she she has a loyal fan base. And there, and you have people as you if you heard that video of the reaction for that film, especially when MJ is falling, people are invested and they want to and they want to see how this turns out. Um, again. No Way Home tells it all. The title No Way Home says it all. And based on stuff that Tom Holland has said recently, I'm sure you know, Brian, about him moving on. And if he's Spider-Man and he's 30 years old and he's still doing Spider-Man, he, he, something went wrong. So there seems to be, he seems to be laying the foundation of his exit Amy Pascal is saying a different thing. Um, we don't know the future of it, but I tend to believe that Spider-Man from after this film is done, he is going to be exclusively on in, in the Sony platform and Sony is going to be building this universe out. And that'll be that. No way home. That's what, that's the whole point of it, I think. What are your thoughts? And then we'll move on. Yeah, two two last thoughts for me. One, um, we'll see if this how much this plays out in the movie, but... I really liked Molina in this trailer uh, because if you remember in Spider-Man 2, part of what makes the performance great is that he isn't all bad. Yeah. You know, the motivation, obviously, his, his he, the tragedy with his wife during the experiment early in the film. But even at the end, remember, even at the end, he kind of reverts to virtue to help. Tell me, McGuire Spider Man, when he kind of was like, we need to, I forget what it was, we need to do something with the river yeah, to drown yeah, yeah, the explosion. Yeah, yes, yes. He helps him in the end. And yes. you see in this one that moment of he's full on attack, and then he's like, You're not Peter, Peter Parker. And at that moment, you get that sense of that ambiguity. And later on, there's a piece of narration where he's kind of telling, it seems like the Tom Holland Spider Man, what's sort of happening. And you don't get the sense he's actually pure villain, which I think is really interesting. But I think uh, if it is a wise choice, because he was never that in the in the Raven yeah. universe. So um, fascinated by that. And then, you know, the, the the second thing is just more humorous. But I don't know what it is about Spider-Man. But if you notice that, like, Spider-Man Spider and, uh, and, and MJ always get together in real life. You know, like Garfield and Stone were together when they were doing this. And now Tom mm -hmm. Holland and Zendaya mm -hmm. are dating. So to your point about chemistry, I think part of it is just that they're not really acting. <laughs> they actually yeah. are dating. Yeah, so, like, yeah, you're yeah. seeing this, like, young love relationship yeah, on yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it so definitely it, helps. My last question for you is, I was trying to figure out that scene where she's falling and it seems to link to the scene where they're jumping at each other with like the bars and the Sandman. Was that a replay 
of the Spider-Man 3 final fight parallel universe. Remember in the Raimi spot, that's kind of what it looked like, right? Christian Dunst falls off like a bridge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they fight down in like a sand pit where they use the bars on then it was mm -hmm. the Topher Grace Venom, but it looked, the set in this looked a little bit like, I actually went back and watched that fight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like, it's not exactly the same, but it has a lot of the same elements and I was trying to mm -hmm. figure out, are we going to actually see like a little parallel universe of actually some set pieces we've seen from mm -hmm. prior Spider-Man I was curious. That's an interesting one to pick, given people didn't yeah. like Spider-Man three. But I, it's it sort of it, it sort of it reminded me of uh, Amazing Spider-Man two with Green when great with great Gwen Stacy falling, which was from the comics. That fall yeah. is straight from the comics. The MJ but she fall, di but she dies. Uh, but she dies in from the comic. Gwen Stacy dies right, and yeah, and, she and, dies in the she dies in the movie, the movie too. too. The, yes, yes, because yes, the back yes. she her yeah, back yeah. doesn't hold up from the web. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, so that's what it reminded me of. Uh, but everybody's going to be wondering who saves it. Is it going to be Tom Holland or the, one of the other Spider-Men? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, very interesting trailer. Again, congratulations to them by not spoiling it for everyone and putting Toby and, and, and Andrew in the trailer. Hopefully they can keep him out until the movie. But we'll just have to wait and see in just a, num a matter of a month, right? December 17th. Yeah. In a month, we'll be in the theaters um, watching Spider-Man, and it's going to be very interesting to discuss. Um, Next up, uh, Disney Plus Day made its announcements of some of the shows that we're going to be seeing very soon. Uh, we're just going to be running down... Uh, what they uh, released um, and revealed and, and quickly talk about what we thought of it. My overall comment, I don't know if you felt the same way. <laughs> there was a lot of a little, if that makes sense. We got these like little snippets, little snippets. But, you know, I, I got to, um, I got to give them a little bit of the same heat that I gave DC. I, I actually feel like a lot of these projects have felt like they were been in production for a while or have yeah. been shooting for a while. I was a little bit disappointed. I thought we'd get a little more footage or longer teasers, maybe 60 seconds instead of 30. All in, I kind of felt like a little bit light on the footage yeah. considering the word. I don't know if you felt the same way. Um, I think I had my favorites. I think we overshadowed the overall experience of what we saw. But they showed something. Um, let's start with She-Hulk. After seeing She-Hulk, Brian, I have to say, I still don't care oh. <laughs> oh. about this. Still worse, not better. I like the way they made She-Hulk look. Is gonna is it gonna look too goofy? We'll see. But you think she was big enough? I think we haven't really seen a side-by-side -side comparison to really tell how big she is. Or oh, we're seeing maybe an early version. I don't know. But. Yeah, yeah. So it's still a bit too early to tell, but I, I'm just not interested in nine episode, half hour uh, comedy, legal comedy. Uh, it just it still baffles me. What are your thoughts on when you saw? Yeah, this, and then uh, that, that thing that like she's cutting that promo at the end where she's breaking oh, the yeah, fourth yeah, wall yeah, and yeah, talking yeah, to you, and I was like, yeah. I'm not into this. I'm just not yeah. feeling it at all. Yeah, I mean, it worked somewhat with WandaVision, but we don't want to continue this fourth wall unless it's Deadpool again. Right? Yeah, plus I was looking, I wanted to see on the timing and the continuity, but obviously Professor Hulk is back. Yes. In this trailer, where obviously in Shang-Chi, he's Bruce Banner. So I don't, I'm a little, I just, I don't know where we are. We need to sort that out, but. I'm yeah, sure, I'm sure that didn't. I'm sure that did not make you happy to see. Oh your, no, I your have... least favorite Hulk appearing. <laughs> it's just, it's it's so disappointing to see the Hulk the way he is. You know, even I remember the the. I don't know if you remember the old um, cartoons with the uh, that had a really dope uh, theme music. I gotta send it to you. I gotta send it to you. Um, but it was a dope uh, uh, music for the Hulk. And seeing the Hulk uh, TV with TV series with Bill Bixby, you know, the Hulk was a monster, yo. 
Yeah. And even when you read stories like World War Hulk, the amalgamation of those, all these iterations of the Hulk, Professor Hulk being an instance of something that you remember, but not necessarily enjoyed that much, right? It was interesting, but we didn't get enough of the savagery of the Hulk or the monster Hulk to appreciate Professor Hulk. They came too early with it. Um, so yeah, I was very disappointed. Very disappointed. Uh, so we'll see, man. We'll see. Um, Echo, we didn't see anything about that, right? We didn't see. They just it's too early to say. Yeah. They just telling. We knew it was coming. We've known yeah. it was coming since she was cast. Um, and like I said, I think you're going to see, if not an episode or part of an episode, I think part of Hawkeye is going to be from the perspective of a person who cannot hear. I think you'll see effects done because it's funny if you've ever seen um Quiet Place or a Quiet Place Two, um, the daughter in that is an actor who can't hear or, or is an actor who can't hear in real life and she's awesome mm -hmm. Millicent Simmons mm -hmm. but when Krasinski switches the perspective to her perspective he the sound goes away like it, it's done as if you're in her head and I think you're going to see something similar to that with her. you can thank Makari for getting people interested in something like this yeah her performance was great in Eternals um, and this is just going to keep that, uh, that same, uh, idea going. And I'm, and I'm certainly fascinated in seeing what this is going to look like and, and, and feel like, um, we didn't get anything about Ironheart, right? No, just, not really. Just the announcement. Um, yeah. what do you, how I'm do you not, feel about that? Not hyped. Yeah. yeah. Not hyped. Yeah. You need to, you need to, you need to hook me on that one. Yeah. Hopefully they can do what they used to do in the comics and what they've done in phase one, phase two is introduce some of these characters in others, uh, uh, shows or movies or whatever. And, but they already announced the show. So it's going to be hard to, yeah. but hopefully they are well liked in whatever a first appearance that they make, hopefully is in other, Again, stories, a uh, uh, film and TV, whatever, and and hopefully it translates into their own series. Let's see. Agatha Hart, Agatha House of Harkness. What are your thoughts on that, Brian? I'm interested in this. I'm actually interested. I'm impressed. I am skeptical. Uh, I loved Catherine Hahn in One Division, but this to me is. It's like analogous to if you remember like in the 90s when like Seinfeld and Friends went off the air and then they're like hey we'll just bring Kramer back and we'll do the Michael Richards show or we'll bring Matt LeBlanc back and we'll do you know basically the, the the Joey show and I'm like these characters work when they're inside the hole but when you pull them out and make them their own thing I'm not convinced there's enough there to stand alone yeah. obviously the connectivity of Agatha Harkness to the broader MCU is interesting I just don't know like if this there's enough here to like carry its own show so i'm a little yeah. bit skeptical i think this show certainly presents itself with an opportunity to introduce new characters and perhaps um evolve some ideas that were probably uh started with wandavision uh, so i'm looking to see how that unfolds by the way i don't think you should be holding your breath for mephisto Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that <laughs> I still so think he's around, but I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> well, well, no, but it's funny. So we'll, we'll talk more about Nate Moore and some of his publicity around Eternals. But mm -hmm. I mean, he, if they're planning to do Mephisto imminently, he did a pretty good job of putting people off the set because he actually was asked and responded to the fan theories about Mephisto, mm -hmm. and the first thing out of his mouth was basically. I don't know why everyone was so mm -hmm. obsessed with Mephisto. He's a dumb character. <laughs> he crushed the comics character. He was like, he's like, why do people want to see this? This this yeah. is stupid. Like, wow. so I was like, okay, if they're planning it, <laughs> I would say it's 
he got voted down in the parliament because <laughs> he was he was going in on Mephisto as a useless wow. character in the wow. universe. Interesting, interesting. He, he he either really feels this way or he's doing everything to throw you off the trail. Which, which is brilliant if, it, if that is. Oh, true. yeah. Because it felt really genuine when he said it. So. <laughs> um, Secret Evasion, we already know what to expect with that. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see how that story unfolds and if it leads to a film. Because um, it's a big event. There's double crosses. There's this that all factor, that drama that I think there's a huge opportunity there to build on in the Disney show. And I guess the the ending of that saga with the Secret Invasion in a film, who knows? What are your thoughts, Brian? Yeah, I mean, my only disappointment here was I thought they were a little further along. I thought we would get a little bit more of a full-fledged commercial or, or mini teaser. Uh, but this is not one they need to really sell to me. So I'm just dying to see footage and dying to see the show. This one, I think, is going to be top top shelf so um super excited about this one but yeah. like i said was hoping we get a little little more of a tease than we got true true um and this announcement when they said it i mean this had been a rumor for quite some time and now this was confirmed and again brian for me it started with i can go back to the Batman, the show on the the, the 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 TV with um, what's his dude, Adam West. It goes back to Bill Bixby, the animated shows, Spider Man and Super Friends, Justice League, not Spider Man and his amazing friends, to um, um, the Super Friends, even Space goes with. I'm gonna say, if they ever did Space Goes, John Hamm is perfect for it. Oh, interesting. Okay, perfect. He is perfect for, for that. Um, but X Men, yeah, for many people, it started with X Men. Brian, I can remember it was Saturday, and if my mom asked me to go to the store, I was upset. Back then, we didn't have DVRs. You have the the only possible possibility to record it is getting a, v a VHS ready. To, to 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 record it and watch it. X Men, like we were having this conversation um, pre before we started the show. I was watching the show. Um, today I watched a few episodes and I started taking down notes. And it's like, yo, this was great. This was fantastic, man. This, this is, uh, what are your what were your thoughts? Uh, did it bring you back to those days when you used to watch the X-Men show on, 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 on Fox? Yeah, look, I mean, th to me, this show is the Terminator 2 of comic book animated series. And I'm, what I mean by that is, you know, when Terminator 2 comes on these days and you watch it on TV, you're like, you could tell somebody this was made last year and they wouldn't really think you were crazy because yeah. the effects are eternal. They hold up 90% of them. Yeah. I feel that way about the animation and the... And the the maturity of the storyline and the voice acting, acting the voice vo acting yes. like you could tell me this show was made last week and i'd be like yeah this is cutting edge and yeah. no it's actually like 30 years old it's insane how good this show is yeah I, like i said i look i mean <laughs> the, the, the the good and the bad of this is look you we probably at the time certainly felt like we wanted more of this and didn't get it yeah. at the same time like this is a risk like you're touching the grail. Like you're going, yeah. this is, you know, this is, this would be like if Jordan came back in 99 <laughs> and went after the seventh title, right? Like you want to touch that record? Are you sure? Because yeah. this is, because if you don't do a good job with this, yeah, yeah I was going to sully the legacy a little bit, you know? And so I kind of feel like I, I applaud them for taking a swing. And I feel like for them to take the swing, they had to feel like they, they, they have the material they want to draw from the comics. They got the voice talent back which I hope most of their voices still hold up because some of those yeah. voices are actually pretty hard to do. Yeah. Like Wolverine, for example, yeah, which was yeah. great. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, anyone who grew up when we grew up and anyone who's seen that show, are you not sitting down to check out a few episodes of a, a next gen or a continuity of, of this? Like, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't 
quite like the last season of it. I didn't like the, the animation changed a little bit. I don't um, remember that now. Yeah, go definitely go back. It, it, it definitely changed a little bit, but still the maturity. And when did you hear previously on the X-Men or any cartoon? You know, it was show by show. Like, you can't watch He-Man at this age. No. You know, because it's... it's you can't it's, even it's, watch Voltron at this age. It, the yeah, animation it, it, doesn't hold up. Like It's, 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 it's horrible. Um, this but, show was also bingeable before yes. bingeable was a thing. Like, if you were to go back now... So, I love, like, Transformers Generation 1, for example. There's people. And to come back to this and not let it hit home uh, or have that feeling of this is what I grew up watching and, or at least at the same level or better. Do you also put the Batman, the animated series as being done on DC by um, Bruce, Tim, uh, Matt Reeves yeah. and them. So I do with one difference, which mm -hmm. is the new Batman animated series that they're working on. I am excited that that's rated R. That oh wow! The fact that oh, Bruce Tim damn I didn't know that. that Bruce Tim I'm crazy said, right now. <laughs> so the fact that Bruce Tim said I don't have to cut anything anymore made me feel like okay we have a new dimension to play with that this show actually does not because Disney Plus is obviously not going to do that yeah. relative to what you got on Fox I guess it was uh, yeah. back in the back in the day. So yeah. Batman I'm actually not not as worried about. Because got of that, it, got it. yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely, yeah, that's a huge difference. Because I guess it wouldn't be R. What would they call it? TVMA or TV fourteen? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. Supposedly it's a more adult rating. That's yeah, yeah, doing. yeah. That's that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm more excited for it. So yeah, man, let us let us know what you think about that. The X Men and picking up from um, that final episode or whatever, and uh, and and using the same animation style, right? That's going to be interesting. That's going to be very interesting. I hope it works out. I'm looking forward to it. Too bad we got to wait till 2023. It seems like a long way. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. Um, what did you think of Spider-Man freshman year announcement? I'm fine with it. I mean, it makes sense. I think like in the sense of if you're going to explore, we talked about this, the age of Peter Parker and the age of Spider-Man. So I kind of feel like, yeah, if you're going to explore a little bit of older Peter Parker, older Spider-Man, yeah. this forum is a good place to do it. I think that's fine to, to to try that. So I don't know. Like I said, like compared to my excitement for X-Men, not on the same level, but like, yeah, yeah, there's, I think there's material here to make that work. Are you getting a sense of all that feeling of too much Spider-Man? We're getting it's just too much. <laughs> I could be. It definitely yeah. could be. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's people out there that feel that, especially if it doesn't bring that same excitement that people are having for, especially after Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, what's what's that going to be? Think about the level of excitement that people have for it now. Are people yeah. going to come out to see Spider-Man or watch Spider-Man uh, the freshman year cartoon? Is it going to be adult oriented? Or was it, is it going to be similar to what we got in Spider Man the animated series on Fox, which was dope? I liked it very yeah, much. That was good. That was good. You know, yeah, that was good. Oh, so I, uh, I'm probably more excited for. I mean, I'm probably more excited for like Into the Spider Verse two than I am for this show. But it's not really a fair comparison, I suppose, yeah. from the movie. So. Yeah. Just saying, there's a lot of Spider Man things happening. Yeah, I agree. So, so let's and see. Sony's gonna going to beat that horse <laughs> absolutely deader than dead. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm wondering, before we move on, will it have this same effect of us seeing shows about other characters without the main guy there? Similar to what we say usually about the Batman shows that aren't Batman. Um, Will, will we be missing that feeling <clears throat> or that presence in these uh, um, new uh, characters that they're going to be introducing into the Sony Spider-Verse? 
Yeah. No, I think the short answer is yes. I think it's it's definitely a challenge. It really puts a lot of you know onus on the leads, you know, to to carry that void. Yeah. And you know, I it, it's classic Hollywood, right? They see Joker work. They see Venom work commercially, if not criti- critically, yeah. and they're all copycatting it, thinking that you can do this seven or eight different ways. And the reality is you can't. And there's select films, select performers, and select stories that you can get away with. with. But at the end of the day, like I don't think people are here for a trilogy or a quadrilogy of <laughs> these characters without their... I mean, even like Todd Phillips' Joker, like, Bruce Wayne is in it. Like he's not going three or four rounds with Joaquin Phoenix before Batman's going to yeah. show up. It's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Marvel Zombies, Brian. I'm not too interested in this, but there's a lot of people that are. Yeah. Um, your thoughts? Yeah. Look, I mean, it was it was a it was not my favorite episode of What If, but I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah. the Avengers, you know, kind of in zombie world, and so I think. Once I saw the episode, I was basically looking for something like this and was not surprised at all that this formally became part of the universe because, you know, something another something that's classic Hollywood is zombies, right? Zombies of all kinds and all mediums. And so the Marvel version of that, yeah, check the box. It's now in the lineup. So it won't be something that I line up to watch unless it's awesome. Like unless we get like Walking Dead season one, hype around this yeah yeah but um yeah i'm not surprised they're doing it yeah um seems like marvel is doing marvel in every sort of film and tv genre which Mm -hmm. whether it's uh, romance drama comedy in you know in all these different areas, but Marvel. So, um, well, everyone's see. doing the Netflix model mm. in the end, right? Yeah. Which is Netflix from the start has always been the, you throw a hundred things against the wall and you find the, the five that stick and, you know, Disney's no different. I mean, they have the IP, they have a catalog play around with everything you have. And you know what, if there's no audience and it's not good, it can just go away and then sit on the service as six episodes for posterity. Great. Yeah. It's funny. It's amazing when you go through Disney Plus, all these like little satellite things to the classic animated films I never knew existed. I'm like, what is this like Lion King <laughs> one and a half? Like, what, what was this? You know what I mean? But I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, kids yeah, yeah. like that stuff and you find it even though it's 20, 30 years later. So that's my thought. It's like, it's just a modern version of this, right? We're just throwing these up because there's the IP is there and some of these will hit and some of them won't. And that's okay. Yeah. I gotta ask you this. And I will be disappointed if you haven't. Have you watched the Silver Surfer cartoon? I have not yet. Sorry. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta watch it, yo. I want to hear what you have to say about this. <laughs> okay. Because I want to do a, 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 a spotlight on Galactus and Silver Surfer, how they're going to do this. We're, we are, they're already giving us some crumbs uh, as yeah. to giving us a reason for Galactus. Um, but Colonel's how, writers were teasing it. Yeah, and how do we introduce the Silver Surfer? I, I would definitely like to get into discussion about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was it for Disney Plus Day. Um, there wasn't any. Oh, I mean, they announced, uh, but we already knew Obi Wan Kenobi. They showed some some things in there, but some of them was from stuff we've already seen in other films, correct? That's what I mean by like, I felt like some of these were further along and I thought we would get like a little more of a tease or we'd get Hayden Christensen shown, yeah. you know, or quoted and like we didn't. And, uh, you know, I think that was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, Hawkeye, obviously, we'll get we'll get into a lot of that starting next week because that that's ready to go. And, I, yeah. you know, it's funny that uh, like Matt Fraction's actually been out Kind of doing interviews and it's really interesting to listen to him talk about the conception of it and you know how shocked he is at, at what happened and how it worked and and uh, wow. so it's yeah I mean I'm actually I'm actually but also it sounds like he he was involved directly so this is a lift of his work but he was actually which isn't always the case they always credit the creator but they don't necessarily have the creator at the table and in the room consulting on the show which apparently he was so i'm actually really excited to see how faithful 
uh, this is. But he seems pretty pleased with it. That's, so. that's, hey, that's a brilliant idea to have the creators and, and of something successful and be there to sort of guide you towards another success, right? Um, I'm very excited for, for Hawkeye. Um, looking forward to seeing you. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think uh, for, for Hawkeye. You guys excited for it. Um, let's move on from the Disney Plus Day um, and get into some news, some concerning news regarding Doctor Strange and the extensive reshoots that they're going through right now. Brian, what do you think is happening that is causing them to sort of, uh, I guess, scramble is an appropriate word to get to redo some of this, the, the scenes in this film or what has changed? Do you think story has changed? What are your thoughts? I definitely think story has changed. So I'm actually going to link Spider-Man No Way Home to this movie for a second. So Tom Holland, one of the things he's said in interviews is that the script for No Way Home was being rewritten on the fly, which isn't unprecedented. But I would uh, say, you know, even though this is in a pure MCU production, it's a little unusual for the Marvel productions to have mm -hmm. that much fluidity. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Doc Strange is in a little bit of the same place. As we talked about, Scott Derrickson goes out, Sam Raimi comes in. You know there's going to be some transition there. But you wonder if, you know, they got through it. They're looking at what they have in the editing room. And they're also mindful of what's now been introduced in WandaVision and Loki and other shows that they're trying to connect to. And they're realizing that this movie is not bridging and connecting everywhere they want it to uh, in the multiverse. So I think it got a mix of, if I had to guess, not creative differences, but creative evolution from Derrickson to Raimi. And then you also have kind of like MCU multiverse kind of type homework that they need to get done in this movie that maybe is bigger now than it was anticipated to be when they scripted this film that would be my best guess i'm still not like red flag concerned but this is definitely now morphing into a bigger uh redo than your typical sort of pickup reshoot that we get on most of these films are you worried where's your worry meter um, I think I'm leaning towards, um, those ideas of that evolution aspect of, of the story and people getting their heads together and, and having conversations and, and trying to piece this together and make sure that there aren't any of these huge plot holes that they want to sort of revisit later on. You know, they want to keep it tight and... As you said, if they're rewriting this um, and having this this flexibility to to rewrite while you're shooting, things will change, um, and so they have to make sure that things make sense when Doctor Strange two comes out. Because it, to me, this is one of the bigger films uh, of 2022. Um, it is, uh, and 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 this to me is sort of much bigger uh, overall to the to the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, in a long time, since, since probably Endgame and Infinity War. This is also going to be tight, because if they're starting this now, and they got a, they got a, what is it? Um, What did they back this up to? May? Yes. I mean, you know, I think obviously we talked about it. They don't want to be too close to the Batman. Nobody in the genre should be, but even so, if you're shooting, let's say you go in two, let's say you do two, three weeks of shooting. You're into the Christmas holiday with just the raw footage. We haven't seen a trail. It's it's tight. I mean, this is definitely going to go down to the wire, I think, post-production to get everything sorted and ready to go. I have faith. Like I said, I have faith because I think I know where they, they know where they want to go. But like, this one definitely you're right like this is a key piece of the multiverse like this if this you know in the way that like loki very skillfully gave you an intro to the multiverse like if this fumbles the ball meaningfully like that's a setback yeah. to the whole enterprise of the multiverse yeah. yeah if anything i'm more excited for this and not not concerned at all for 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 what's happening with dr strange 
It's, show, it's showing. Uh, I would then this is the word. It's it's showing. Um, not care. It, damn, what's that damn word? I hate it when I lose my thoughts for words, man. But I had the perfect word for it. Um, I, I'll think of it later. But I do think there's a piece of this though that like phase four. And, and I, you know, what's, we can talk about the whole year as a whole, where we stand, but so far, phase four has one, which I would say positive element that you can feel, which is experimentation. You can feel it. You can feel Marvel at the edges trying, messing around. And like in a way that phase one leading into all the way up to endgame, I think there was such a clear, focused direction of what they were what they were swinging for from the moment that Nick Fury shows up at the end of Iron Man once yes. the lane was pretty narrow. They knew what the next point was. I'm not as convinced they totally know what the end game oh. of this phase is. So I think there's a little bit of tinkering, adjusting, of like, yes. you know what I mean? And this movie getting this treatment has that feel of like, yeah, we're here. Why don't we? Why don't we move here? Why don't we move there? Let's see. And if you know, it, it will. It might result in a little bit of a disappointing film, but I, I think they'll find it. And I think they're just searching for kind of that right balance and formula, and they don't totally have it yet. And that's fine. I think that's yeah. actually good for them. Thoughtful. That's the word I was looking for. They're being thoughtful of what it is that they're trying to do and to create and lead towards. If you thought that hundred and fifty dollars. For that book that they came out with, with all the secrets and all this other stuff, <laughs> part two is going to be a doozy. Part two is going to be even crazy if they ever do that. I, that one I'll buy because this this next phase uh, or next phase is I'm pretty sure is not easy. And there's a lot of people in the parliament talking to each other and writers, and, and it's it's not a scramble. It's just that they're working. Trying, they're trying to keep the the, the vision uh, that they had for the first three phases in terms of cohesiveness and 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 I guess uh, um, grand uh, stories and put it together real nice. Um, Brian, you had listened to a, a, a podcast. Um, it's on Spotify, Spotify called Ringiverse, correct? Yeah, and Ringiverse. Nate Moore was a uh, guest uh, and they interviewed him and what were what did you t get take away from this i'm pretty sure i i didn't know about this but you you listened to it and you tell me your thoughts on what he said yeah shouts to the ringerverse they do a great job over there i don't always agree with the opinions but they have really good content and they get some really they get they get some really cool interviews um and they do have some they do have some some scoops as well but namor came on as I said, I already gave you the um, the Mephisto rant that he went on, which was mm -hmm. unsolicited. And I, you know, I uh, I thought he was a really interesting listen. I've never actually heard an extended. It's always Kevin Feige, right? We know, and we know, and sometimes it's um, I'm gonna get Victoria Delonzo. I think does some of these, but like mm -hmm. Namor is seemingly getting more rope. You know, he kind of was the lead producer on Eternals. Mm -hmm. um, he a couple of things he said which I thought were, were one was, so he got asked about the Marvel DC thing mm -hmm. crossover. Oh, wow. And he gave a very candid answer, which was, he was like, he's like, look, has it been talked about? Obviously, like, you know, we, we understand. He's like, mm -hmm. but he's like, you know what the main problem is? He's like the main, and I think this actually is the right answer. I was mm -hmm. listening to it. I was like, I don't think I'm being shy now. He said, mm -hmm. you know what the problem is? He's like, if you're a rep he's like, if you're a representative of the MCU, you'll never accept the MCU losing. If you're a representative of the DCU, ECEU, you'll never accept their characters losing. He's like, so the problem is the end of all of these comics or these story ideas always basically has to be, hey, let's shake hands, you're both great. And he's like, that really stinks as yeah. like a movie or a show. And yeah. I was like, you know what? 100%. Bingo. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the answer. Like that is co the correct answer. And yeah. like he encapsulated it perfectly of why this really can't 
realistically ever happen and why it's yeah. like not that cool in the end to see it happen it's much better when it's in the um like the fighting games they do remember like what was it marvel versus capcom that's yeah. fine you can do that's the mortal combat yeah. style for fun in the game but he's right like you think like warner brothers is gonna sit there and be like hey we're gonna let superman appear in this movie so that he can then job for you know <laughs> the Thor? Hulk or like that's yeah, never yeah. gonna happen that's yeah, never yeah, happening yeah. It's not happening so yeah yeah so wow um and, oh and, and the other one so the other okay. big one let's talk about it t'challa mm -hmm. so this he he was asked about Chadwick bozeman's passing and wakanda forever and yes. we should talk about this yes. and he gave a very direct answer in which he said we will never recast t'challa in the okay. 616 Six. okay so Got it. it leaves the door open for a multiversal T'Challa somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. But he said, we talked about it every which way. We couldn't bring ourselves to ever feel like we could replace Chadwick. And so he's like, we, we, I think we're up for the challenge of building the world, honoring him and without him. But he's like, you will never see T'Challa in the six, Earth 616 again. I mean, it was very definitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think yeah. about that? I know that's not the view you and I have shared. What What do you? What's your reaction to that? I just feel it's a shame. Um, unless they can establish another Black Panther, I think it's a missed opportunity to see a lot of eventful things that happens with that character. That character has a lot of story, and I just I. I I honestly, and I've said this before in, in, in a podcast that we did, we talking about this very thing and, and got a lot of views, by the way. Thank you for that. Um, you miss out on the opportunity to see a, a African-American king, you know, um, yeah. and to pass it on to... From what I've heard, Umbaku, I've, there's, there's a rumor that he's going to be the Black Panther. Are we going to see him and Storm get together? It's like, does that happen now? And how does it happen? Does it make sense? You know, there's a lot of different things that... I don't think Chadwick would have wanted this. I think he would have wanted you to continue because... You know, let's say he would have been good. Let's say he wouldn't wasn't able to play the character anymore for whatever other reason other than what had happened. He would want you to recast and, and continue on that journey with T'Challa uh, and the Black Panther. But now is let's see what they say, what they do um, with this 616 um, reference. Um, hopefully it's something comparable and, and that is good as well. I still mm -hmm. think. So as, as definitive as Nate Moore is about it today, and I still understand this is very fresh, I still think within five to 10 years, the fans will actually want this and ask yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, I just... Because I think if they do a good enough job too with building this world and sustaining it over the next picture or two, I think the fans are going to basically, you'll start the groundswell for, you know what would be really great to add into this world? Recast. I, I think it'll happen. I yeah. think it'll happen. Yeah, let us know what you think about that decision um, with regarding the Black Panther. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate. And I, think, I think there's a huge opportunity to continue the the, the character of T'Challa and the Black Panther. And, and I think that event of him marrying a storm, the wedding, that's a huge event, you know. That's a huge event. Uh, uh, that I would, would would have loved to have seen on film, and their divorce. <laughs> so, hey, love in Wakanda. <laughs> so let's see, man. Let's see. Um, next up, uh, Star Wars. Rogue Squadron has been delayed. Ryan, I'm not actually interested in seeing this. I am, for the record. Yeah. Yes, yes, you are. 
Um, I, I'm assuming this has to do with her um, progress on Wonder Woman 3 and, and and hence this is being delayed. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, so the official story was it was scheduling. That was the official story. The unofficial story that came out after was creative differences. Now, this is not the first time Patty Jenkins and Disney have gone a few rounds over a movie because Patty Jenkins was the original director for Thor The Dark One mm -hmm. and quit that project over creative differences. Mm -hmm. And the report is saying, and I mean, you can you get your reaction to this. I mean, the short of it is, she is basically saying, I had all this free, I have all of this uh. freedom over on Wonder Woman to do whatever I want, and you won't give me that in the Star Wars universe. So we have a problem. Bye. To which I say, yeah, but Wonder Woman 84 wasn't good. It was why hard. Should we give, why should we give you yeah. all that freedom when the Star Wars exactly. universe as a movie franchise is not in great shape? Exactly. Wonder Woman 84 was horrendous, in my opinion. It With aged the, poorly, too. I think it, like I got caught up in the fact that we hadn't seen a movie for so long, so it felt okay. And then I, like you go back like, and you're just like, yeah, man, that... Like Pedro Pascal was Jedi mind tricking me for part of that movie because it's not—it's just not that good. It's, not that good. He, it's just not a good film. And if if you have made a stellar film, then yes, we give you more creative control. I wouldn't say total, because again, if you're trying to—I mean, everybody's trying to do what Marvel has done successfully done, right? And you don't want these instances where these certain things don't make sense and 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 that has no co connectivity and this and the story isn't good so if wonder woman 84 was your last film and everybody's looking at that film and saying that it was horrible why would us why would we give you creative control we don't we're starting starting off at a good foot with star wars again things are getting great we don't we don't need this, a, a bad film so that makes sense. Yeah. That makes I mean it's a passion project for her. If you look at the teaser she did at the Disney Day last year, like her father was a fighter pilot. So this is sort of her like, you know, childhood dream type of picture. So I understand why she would have strong feelings about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like you could have made that passion project movie outside the Star Wars universe. Like, yeah. you know, not Zack Snyder's making Rebel Moon. That was originally a Star Wars idea, right? And now mm -hmm. he's doing it as his own thing over at Netflix. Like, mm -hmm. you could have done that. Yeah. So you sign up for certain restrictions when you sign up to be part of Star Wars. And she should know that. Like, she yeah. should know that. I actually am very excited only because I do feel like, like I said, I some of Star Wars' finest moments remain in space this the battle at the end of the original star wars is still transcendent and i look at even like modern effects today like if you go see um dunkirk the flying sequences on imax and i'm imagining those in star wars verse and i'm kind of like i want to and the video games right which were so influential for so many people growing up that were x-wing and x-wing versus tie fighter like that's why i'm interested like I, there's yeah. a nostalgia there for me that i really want to see on screen so i hope this works out but mm -hmm. i also don't feel like she's the only person on the planet who can make that kind of movie yeah man let's see what happens let's see what happens with that let us know in the comments section below what you what do you guys think uh will patty jenkins make this movie will disney succumb to yet another director who wants it their way look how look how polarizing the eternals work man yeah. we spoke about people Talented people wanting to do it their way, not everybody likes it. And that's not what you expect. So, yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think is going to happen with that. Next up, and this is, uh, this, should have, this should have its own segment of the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. 
I'm just putting down my mic for the next couple of minutes. Go ahead. So Halle Berry, I cringe at even the memory of watching a scene, that basketball scene with Benjamin Pratt in Catwoman. That joint is cringe worth. Oh my God, that, yo, this movie was horrendous. And then when you hear Halle Berry talk about how, what kind of movie she wants to do, she wants a Catwoman to save the world. Are you kidding me, man? Nobody's funding this movie. This movie's never getting done. This is just one of those things that people got caught saying in public and they're going to get this reaction. Brian, what were your thoughts on this? I am. I hope there's no chance of this. No, um, there's no chance. Listen, I mean, like Halle Berry's making her directorial debut, I think, and that's part of what's fueling it. It's funny because we we now are in this era. You know, we talk about like Hayden Christensen coming back to kind of make amends for his, you know, his legacy or the or the the, the flack that he got playing Anakin, and like, let's not get carried away here. Let's yeah. not get carried away with actors who stepped into a role and delivered a, a bomb you don't all get to just come back and say do over that, that's yeah. not okay like we're not cool with that it, it, it can work in certain circumstances but if everyone's gonna start doing that yeah and then we can talk about that that would be superhero fatigue oh yeah we're gonna start remaking every bad superhero like so yeah. does that mean Affleck and Garner should redo? Well, that'd be actually yeah. be pretty funny now with their current relationship situation mm -hmm. if they did Daredevil on Electra now. But like, <laughs> you know, I don't know if we need to see that again. Should Nick Cage get another run at Ghost Rider just because? <laughs> like, come on, man. We yeah, don't yeah. need we don't need these. We no. don't need these. And please yeah. tell me there's not, as you said, not a studio willing to throw 80 to 100 million dollars at this. Yeah. And listen, Halle Berry can be a great director she can do but she can do two films that are you know critically acclaimed she wasn't but listen to the idea she's talking about yeah you can't do that she again she can be talented as hell but these ideas aren't great james cameron before we move on james cameron had an idea of what sort of spider-man film he wanted to do I read it and I and I and and it was horrendous. Brian, I don't know if you 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 I, I vaguely remember this, yeah. Because yes. this was yeah, I vaguely remember this. This was it his was, it, yeah. Yeah, it was like no, we're not doing this. Yeah, no, it was it was like it was in my mind it was comparable to like the Abrams Superman flyby, which yeah. was just like ludicrous at the time. And you're just like, who 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 how did this even get close to getting made? It, it, and as good as yeah, exactly. As good a filmmaker as James Cameron is, everyone has some bad ideas. Yeah, yeah. Um, and our final topic before we get into our, 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 our last um our segment of final thoughts. Um, Ridley Scott went in on the superhero genre. I could just picture him saying how he said it. Um, but he called it the superhero genre is boring. Again, I think he said something to the fact that it's not cinema, it's not it's no good stories. He went in, look it up. Um, should we even care about these things? Because he's trying to do a gladiator too. And if you, you and you mentioned what the plot is for this movie as well. well it was. This, I don't know oh, if it oh, still oh, is. I mentioned changing. what the, the original script oh. that floats around, which you can find it is, is yeah, is, is like Max, the ghost of Maximus resurrected, traveling through time to save various civilizations. It is nuts. Again, talented. Really, Scott is talented. But some ideas... Are, don't just are meant to just stay as ideas and not actually go into production. Your thoughts? Look, I mean, Ridley Scott's probably one of my five favorite filmmakers of my lifetime. Um, I mean, and actually, you, 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 there aren't many guys who, you know, I mean, Blade Runner came out in 1982. Um, and, 
you know, The Martian came out in 2016. Kingdom of Heaven is like 2005. I want like, there's not many dudes who can put out movies over like a 40 year span. And you're like, all of these are going to be up on the wall for a long time. So he's in the rare air. What's weird about his comment to me, he actually made a point that I've made to you previously on this pod, which is the idea of the superhero movie that's not actually from a comic. Because he's like, I've made superhero movies. I've made Gladiator. I'm like, yes, you are correct. <laughs> These directors who are like planning the genre, a lot of them have made movies that I would say are basically superhero movies without having a comic that they're based yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Maximus is a great example of that kind yeah. of character. Yeah. He just turned it into a negative and i was like no man that's a positive that's that's a validation of the genre yeah, yeah, that all yeah. of you have embraced those kinds of stories yeah, yeah. and so you know I, look we're now obviously we're not going to be seeing him directing an mcu or a dceu project but uh which is a shame because he like i said i think he's incredibly incredibly gifted especially when it comes to epic uh mm -hmm. filming but mm -hmm. uh i thought it was interesting that he made that point because in my mind that's always been my like view of why this is this whole criticism is hypocritical because like yeah. Yeah, like just because it wasn't based on a super on superman one doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's not in its dna yeah. a superhero movie yeah 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 let us know in the comment section of what you guys thought of ridley scott's comments um it's just another you know and they either come around or they're, they're forgotten. You know, you don't remember this, you know, so it'll be interesting to uh, see what happens in the future regarding, because this isn't going to stop as long as Marvel and after Bat Reeves, this is definitely not going to stop. Superhero genre is going to keep on going. Um, and that's what people are going to be wanting more of. Your, yeah, uh, but like, I, I gotta say, like, I think there's a, there's a, there's an undertone in these comments that comic books are not literature. What I mean by that is how many films are based on books? Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. But you don't ever hear those called the task. Yeah. It's only comic books, which to me is almost like you're kind of slighting the literature and saying that that's not real literature because of yeah. the pictures or the content, or which I think is equally false. Yeah. And so that, I do feel like that. I do feel like it's like, okay, so if, if, if this movie was based on a book by, was it George R. R. Martin, mm -hmm. who wrote Game of Thrones, would that make it le legitimate? Like, mm -hmm. why is that different? It's just not different to me. It's just like, it's a different form of literature. That's all. Yeah. It's, yeah. Every bit is valid. Yes. Excellent point. Um, in our last segment, final thoughts. Um, Brian, you sent the text to me, and this was immediately after our last week's pod. Yep. And you said, post pandemic, you, you, you sent me a text. It said, post pandemic comic book films so far, so far um, in 2021 um, Wonder Woman 4, Snyder Cut, Suicide Squad, Venom, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, and Amy Turner. Now, some, there are probably some people that would say that's a great lineup. I don't agree with that. You didn't agree with that. Um, and you said uh, that's a pretty weak crop overall. Compare that to 2018, where you listed Infinity War, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Aquaman, Into the Spider-Verse, Deadpool 2, Venom, Incredibles 2, Industry. And you said industry needs a better 2022. Um, talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, look, I mean, okay, so let's go back. Let's let's restate the list for this year. And I did not include No Way Home because we haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. So Wonder Woman, and I put Wonder Woman eighty four because it was Christmas of last year, but we yeah. hadn't seen a movie in a in a year. So yeah. Wonder Woman eighty four, the Snyder Cut, which was a movie even though it didn't go to theaters, Suicide Squad, Venom, Black Widow, Shang Chi, and the Eternals. What is your number one? What's the best movie to you on that list that I just read you? exactly right you're already yeah. the fact that you can't you you're thinking about it is already kind of a it is a toss-up between eternals and shang chi for me okay 
are either of those a great movie? No. Your reaction, you you didn't react that way to either one of them. I know that. Like I like yeah. Shang-Chi better than you, but like you you yeah. So you have those as one or one A. I yeah. I would submit to you if you told me this Snyder cuts in your top two for this year, I wouldn't kill you. I think it's a defensible argument. Go through this list. Like, I actually think if you said to me, like, I, number one might be tough, but like, if you said to me, like, the second best comic book piece of filmmaking that came out this year was the Snyder Cut, I don't think that's an insulting statement. I definitely, I, I don't know, that it, I enjoyed it more than the Suicide Squad. I enjoyed it more yeah. than Black Widow, personally. I definitely enjoyed it more than Venom. I definitely enjoyed it more than Wonder Woman 84. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Was... So it's like, it's probably. And we're talking about too... Venom 2, right? Venom 2, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm like, Venom 2 was horrible. Go, so uh... like, you know, I probably would have Shang Chi number one for me. Eternals two. Yeah, but Snyder cuts not. It's not like it's light years behind. It's probably in the third no. slot. No, you it's know? not like there's, there's definitely. But this uh, is my point. Yeah, yeah. This is my point. So now go back to 2018. Okay, so take your Shang Chi or Eternals or Snyder cut if you like that. Is that let's say that's your top three? Where would those fall on this list? Infinity War, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Aquaman, Into the Spider-Verse, Deadpool 2, Venom, Incredibles 2. Would they be above any film on no. this list? No. Maybe Ant-Man and the Wasp. Like maybe Shang-Chi. I would have Shang-Chi ahead of Ant-Man and the Wasp, but like... Yeah, man, probably. I mean... Oh, I, I would... Oh, okay, you know what? Let me rethink. I don't want to be so dismissive. Deadpool 2, uh, I would definitely put Eternals above Deadpool 2. Deadpool okay. 2 was just a continuation of Deadpool 1, and it was just more the same, and I didn't okay. like it that much. Yeah. But they're not making the top five, I don't think, because you would definitely have Infinity War, Black yes. Panther, Into the Spider-Verse, Incredibles 2, which is an amazing movie, and then you know you, Aquaman's more polarizing, but like you could... Yeah, you 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 have a tough time definitively yeah. saying any movie from this year is in the five best of 20. Yeah. That was my point. And the reason why I said 2018, Pablo, was that 2019 wasn't really a fair year because you had Endgame, which everyone cleared out for. You had Rise of Skywalker, which everyone cleared out for. So you didn't have as much product. You did have three billion dollar movies. You had Captain Marvel, you had uh, Far From Home, and you had Endgame, but it wasn't as big of a year. This was the last sort of diverse full year for the industry. There's just no comparison. No yeah. comparison. Yeah. I think we're certainly more optimistic. Just to wrap things up, I think we're more op optimistic for 2022 um, for the titles that will be coming out um, th that this year coming. Uh, for, certainly for Disney Plus, uh, but we, with regards to movies, we got um, um, Doctor Strange, which I, again is a huge film. Um, what other big movies? I mean, well, the Batman, the That's Batman, the... yeah, yeah. But we, 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 yeah, we got the Batman, Doctor Strange. What, what else? Well, you I would know? say what, on the revised schedule, where is Thor? Love and thunder. and thunder. I think it's still 2022. It's just yeah. So the expectations for that yeah. will be enormous. Yeah. Uh, you know, quantum mania. The stakes. I, oh, yeah. You know, we, you, you want to see who this? I mean, we'll see. But like, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. the expectations will be there. Black Adam. Obviously, there's still, you know, despite of all, all of our skepticism, there will be a lot of intrigue around that. Yes. Um, but my bottom line point was when we talk about superhero fatigue. It's a quality discussion. To me, this is a year where we can talk about fatigue because I don't think the overall quality of the films was all that great. Yeah, yeah. You give us another year like 2018, I think everyone's coming out. Oh, yeah. In force. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. That subject of superhero fatigue is always continuously after, I guess, is going to be mentioned or thought about or felt after a horrible film oh yeah for sure you know and i think if we get or um, or like suicide squad a critically acclaimed film which does poorly yeah yeah because it's like 
why are we, why are we going to put money into these films that nobody wants to see and they're good movies but nobody really wants to see there's certainly we can't get consecutive bad films or films that fail in the box office then you're going to have people rethinking um but i don't think we're going to get that i think this year is going to be stellar especially with the batman especially with Doctor Strange, especially with Jonathan Majors um, reprising his role as Kang the Conqueror, but as a different one, the one that we're supposed to be afraid of. So I'm looking very much forward to seeing what that's going to look like. Um, so there's still yet a lot to explore, new uh, characters to introduce, and, and, and more things to talk about. And I don't think there's an end really... Um, in sight, um, especially for 2022. Last words. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think, I think next year figures to be better. Um, I think, I don't think I wasn't meaning the comment as like a signal of like the end of the industry. I was simply yeah, making yeah, yeah. an observation that like, yeah. you're going to have different vintages and some are going to be better than others. And I just yeah. don't think 2021 was a great year. Yeah. We'll see if yeah. no way home elevates that or add to that point. But I don't think we're gonna, 10 years from now, I don't think we're gonna look back at this crop of films and say that this was top shelf for the genre. Yes. Well, you, this is the, the dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> On the superhero genre. <laughs> this is gonna be the year uh, that people remember as the dark ages. Uh, but yeah, hit us up in the comments, man. Let us know what you guys think of some of the things that we've said. Um, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share it with your friends. Um, it, it really does help support the channel. Get that algorithm going. I'm going to try some something new. It's just finding the time to do it. Again, we work nine to fives. We have families. We have other things to take care of. So that's why it really takes us a, a, a bit of time to get stuff out. But... We certainly dedicate time to at least do something once a week to catch everybody up on the news and the topics that people are discussing. Uh, but that's our show for today, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. <laughs>